Hello everyone, I'm Matt Mitrovich, the alternate historian. I originally planned to ask a different what-if question today, but instead, I'm going to honor someone who saved the world. On September 18th, 2017, it was reported that Stanislav Petrov had passed away in May. Now, some of you may be asking, who the hell is Stanislav Petrov, and why should I care that he died? Well, I'm here to tell you why you should care. On September 26, 1983, Lieutenant Colonel Stanislav Petrov was working at a missile detection bunker south of Moscow in the Soviet Union. His computer alerted him that the United States had launched five nuclear missiles at the USSR. Petrov, however, thought this was a false alarm, as it had always been assumed that any first strike by the Americans would involve hundreds of missiles instead of just five. Plus, he knew the system he was using was highly unreliable. Thus, Petrov, being one of the only civilian educated officers on duty that night, chose not to notify his superiors, which meant he would be disobeying a direct order. Lucky for him, and us, it was eventually confirmed that a glitch in the system had caused a false alarm. What is significant about Petrov's decision is just how likely nuclear war could have broken out in 1983. Tensions between the Americans and Soviets were at an all-time high due to Korean Airlines Flight 7 being shot down on September 1st after it had crossed into Soviet airspace, killing everyone on board, including a U.S. congressman. On top of that, many Soviet officials feared an American first strike was likely. This belief was caused in part because of then-President Ronald Reagan's plans to deploy Pershing-2 nuclear missiles to West Germany and the announcement of Strategic Defense Initiative, which called for nuclear weapons to be put in orbit. The Soviets, however, were already jittery about the Americans before these announcements were made. In 1981, then-General Secretary Leonid Brezhnev and KGB Chairman Yuri Andropov, who would later succeed Brezhnev as General Secretary in 1982, announced a secret American nuclear attack on the USSR was imminent to high-ranking KGB officials. Thus, we can assume the Soviets would be quick to retaliate at any sign of an attack. So as you can see, Petrov made the right call and prevented World War III from starting. Although initially praised by his superiors, Petrov was never officially commended, as it would have embarrassed powerful Soviet leaders and scientists who had championed the early warning system. Instead, Petrov was reassigned to a less glamorous post and eventually took an early retirement. The rest of the world, however, wouldn't even learn about Petrov's quick thinking until after the fall of the Soviet Union. But we could have lost so much, and to prove it, we need to ask ourselves the question, what if Petrov wasn't there? What would happen next? To begin, let's assume someone else was on duty that night, someone less educated and more prone to just following orders. Once the alert was made, they would have immediately notified their superiors. Now, presumably, said superiors could have come to the same conclusion that Petrov did, but given Andropov's distrust of Americans, it's possible he would have launched a full retaliatory strike at the United States and their allies. Perhaps by the time the Soviet missiles went in the air, the glitch may have been discovered, but by then, it would be too late. America's own early warning system would have caught the nuclear strike inbound. It would have launched their own arsenal. World War III would have begun. Determining which places would be nuke is difficult, since it's not like the Americans and Soviets published any maps with X's saying bomb goes here, but we can still make some educated guesses. For example, priority targets would likely be missile silos and military bases, since both sides would hope to knock out the other's ability to wage war. After that, targets would include centers of government, transportation and communication hubs, manufacturing, industrial, technology, and financial centers, locations of oil refineries, power plants and chemical plants, and major ports and airfields. Since large cities tend to have one, if not more, of those things, the civilian death toll would be extremely high once the bombs started falling. I mean, just look at the number of strikes the Chicago area could have received according to this map. Now, I wasn't born in 1983. My parents were alive and living there at the time. I doubt they would have survived that quagmire, and thus, no alternate historian. The allies of the United States and the Soviet Union would also be targeted. NATO and Warsaw Pact members, plus any other country strongly allied with either superpower, like the Koreas, Japan, Taiwan, Cuba, and others, would suffer nuclear bombings. Since Britain and France had their own nuclear arsenals, they too would have launched them at the Soviets, causing even more damage. Thus, much of North America and Eurasia would be devastated, although some regions might avoid being targeted, including neutral nations like Switzerland and Yugoslavia. I would even argue that Berlin might survive due to the large number of personnel and assets both sides had in the city, which they would not want destroyed in friendly fire. Although, a more controversial argument to make is that China would also be targeted by the Soviets. Although both were communist countries, relations between the Soviets and the Chinese deteriorated following the death of Stalin as both countries vied to be the ideological leader of the communist world. Things got so bad that they fought a series of border skirmishes in the late 60s that almost ended in nuclear war. Presumably, the Soviet leadership would fear that even if they won a nuclear war against the U.S., they would be too weak to defend themselves from an aggressive China. Thus, for their own safety, China would need to be taken out too, although China would presumably use their own nuclear weapons on the Soviets as well. So the world went and blew itself up. But what happens on Doomsday Plus One? To sum up, chaos. Millions would die from the blast themselves. 
Anyone left alive near the blast areas would likely die from any injuries they sustained, since emergency services would be either overwhelmed or not existent. More would die from fires raging out of control with no one around to put them out. As his days went on, other issues would arise, such as radiation sickness and starvation. In the years to come, people would also be at greater risk of getting cancer, and birth rates would drop significantly. Famine would be a serious issue across the entire world. Fallout spread by the winds would even impact areas away from any strikes. Acres of farmland, including much of America's Corn Belt, would be useless, causing widespread famine. Nuclear winter caused by all the crap kicked in the air that blocks the sunlight would lead to milder summers and colder winters across the earth, which would only make the global famine worse. Furthermore, the war in its aftermath would create the greatest refugee crisis of all time. Meanwhile, the global economy would quickly collapse as the world's developed nations are flattened. People would fight over what few resources were left in the affected areas, breaking down law and order even further. It's hard to determine which nations survived World War III. Most countries have plans on what to do if such a war breaks out, but planning for it is a lot different than actually trying to survive it. For example, the U.S. government might not have enough time to evacuate Washington once everyone became aware the Soviet strike was incoming. Thus, on September 27th, America could wake up with their major cities burning and no federal government to call for help. It's difficult to speculate on what would happen next, but the worst-case scenario could involve competing factions claiming to be the federal government fighting amongst themselves along with any state governments or opportunistic warlords deciding it's better to go it alone. That said, I don't foresee the Soviet Union doing much better. Despite having a head start on getting out of Moscow, the USSR would only be a few years in our timeline away from their own collapse. A nuclear war would easily speed that process along, regardless of how many of their leaders survive. Outside of the superpowers, we would see military dictatorships come to power, or governments instituting emergency measures as the targeted nations try to deal with the war through the most effective and brutal means possible. Perhaps you might see regions with a large minority population make a break for it in the chaos, causing the map of the world to be vastly different than it is today. Just like this map from the 1983 Doomsday Collaborative Timeline, which follows the same point of divergence as this video. Even nations that avoided nuclear strikes would still have to deal with the larger issues stemming from the conflicts, such as the spread of radiation, the nuclear winter, the refugee crisis, and the collapse of the global economy. New conflicts may even break out without the superpowers around to sit on their antagonists. For example, Israel, being a close ally of the United States, may have suffered attacks by the Soviet Union, and neighboring Arab states may take advantage of that fact to invade and destroy Israel once and for all. Thus, Israel may carry out the Samson option and launch their own nuclear arsenal against their enemies across the Middle East, spreading nuclear destruction to another region of the globe. Meanwhile, most African nations may avoid being directly targeted during the war, but the end of foreign aid and the collapse of the global economy could cause anarchy to spread across the continent, and it would take decades for things to stabilize. South Africa, which would still be in the midst of apartheid in 1983, might fall apart in a bloody racial civil war. Still, it is not all doom and gloom. Regions like South America, South Asia, and Oceania might be able to ride out the worst of World War III relatively intact. It's here in the post-war world that the political and economic centers of power would shift. Countries like Brazil and India would be well-placed to fill the power vacuum left by the burnt-out superpowers and could provide the industry and capital necessary to begin the laborious task of rebuilding the world. While they might not be able to reject military power the way the former superpowers did before the war, they could still hopefully begin the process of leading the world out of the ruin by the present day. Or then again, maybe not. We probably will never know exactly what would happen if nuclear war broke out in 1983. But you know what? That's a good thing. Stanislav Petrov isn't a household name, which in my humble opinion is a damn shame. Petrov is a good example of a person who doesn't simply follow orders without question. He made a difficult decision at great cost to his own career, and in the end probably saved millions of lives. If we ever found ourselves on the brink of nuclear war again, I would hope we would have the courage to do the right thing like Petrov did. Rest in peace, Stanislav Petrov. We'll keep an eye on the world for you. Well, that is all I have to say in the subject. If you like what I do, please comment, subscribe, share this video, support me on Patreon. Plus, stay tuned to After the Credits to find out who won my latest book giveaway. I'm Matt Mitrovich, the Alternate Historian. Bye.